Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the 30th lecture of the course on sociological perspectives and modernity. This is the last lecture and we will wind up with this. As you know, we have covered in this course in total 7 modules. Module 1 represents thematic preliminaries, module 2 sociological modernity, module 3 the structuralist interpretation. Module 4, Western Marxist Perspectives on Critical Modernist Paradigms in Sociology. Module 5, Synthesizing Modernity and Social Theory. Module 6, Deconstruction of Modernity. And Module 7, A New Totality. If we go by, go in terms of weeks, in the first week, we started with thematic preliminaries on modernity. Okay? then what we have discussed on thematic preliminaries very briefly. In thematic preliminaries, we have discussed how the term interrogating modernity does not mean only destruction of the hitherto existing ideas. Interrogating also refers to the dialectic of engaging with and interrogating the hitherto existing ideas and the ethos of interrogating loses its significance in the absence of a critical engagement with hitherto existing ideas. That is why this course aims at a dialectic of engaging with and interrogating modernity. Engagement assumes greater significance in the context of not just interrogation, but also interrogating the interrogator and both engaging with modernity and interrogating modernity are, are context specific. That is why this course simply put is about the critical modernist paradigm in sociology. We have discussed how sociological thinking when I say critical modernist paradigm in sociology, I, I refer to how sociological thinking about modernity and sociology as a modern activi activity and critics of this approach may be framed. And then we have discussed the four central pillars of modernity, okay? four central pillars of critical modernism or critical modernist paradigm in sociology, namely holism or totality, reflexivity, rationality and social movements. Then I mean uh, what is holism or totality? As we have already discussed, holism or totality refers to the idea that society is a unit in some sense and that it can be studied as a single entity. Reflexivity refers to the idea that we cannot simply observe society from outside because we are also involved in it. Rationality refers to the idea that we can understand society in ways we can explain to other people and social movements refer to the idea that creative human action both shapes the social whole and is also shaped by it. Why do these ideas, why do these, these central pillars of modernity matter to us? And how do we get there? The methodological tool to understand them is through C. Wright Mills, the sociological imagination. I mean, the sociological imagination by C. Wright Mills aims to understand first understand the larger historical scene in terms of its meaning and for the inner life and the external career of a variety of individuals. Secondly, it enables us to take into account how 
individuals in the welter of their daily experiences often become falsely conscious of their social positions and thirdly within that welter i mean within the welter of their daily experiences the framework of modern society is sought and the psychologies of a variety of women and men are formulated and fourthly the sociological imagination by c right mills enables us to grasp history and biography and the relationship between the two within society okay that's why the methodological tool that that is required to understand the central pillars of modernity is is uh, lies in the fact that we must study the sociological imagination by by c right mills then we have discussed concept application working relationship with theory then we have discussed nature of sociological theory how we have discussed the social the interactive and the communicable then we have discussed ontological questions as well as epistemological questions i mean uh, ontology when i say i mean the the question of existing the question of being the question of the nature what is being what is existing leads on to methodology the question of how we can come to know it okay and therein we have discussed uh, the materialist conception of history by marx that it is not the consciousness of men that determines their being but on the contrary their being that determines their consciousness okay then within the modernist paradigm in sociology we have discussed the type internal logics and so on and then we have discussed the emergence and development of modernity and then we have also discussed the ambiguity of rationality and control governance versus emancipation i mean instrumental rationality and so on okay and then we have moved to the sociological modernism by marx there we have tried to examine certain dramatic transformations uh, in terms of economy culture and polity okay and uh, we have tried to examine all central critical pillars of modernity central philosophical and political foundations of modernity okay namely holism or totality reflexivity rationality and social movements through the works of marx okay this is very important okay and therein we have how we have tried to look at marx is very important there we have seen how we have discussed marx on modernity uh, and certain methodological warnings and then uh, when i say marx on modernity okay uh, we have described we have discussed uh, holism social movements reflexivity and rationality and then in the third week we have discussed the part 1 of max weber's reflections on on modernity i mean weber's interpretation of modernity rationality and modernity social movements reflexivity uh, and so on okay and the part 2 i mean week 4 uh, in in the fourth week we have discussed the part 2 of max weber and the fifth week captures the ultra relationalism ultra modernism i mean this the, the structuralist case the structuralist interpretation through the works of levi strauss and althusser we have discussed here in the context of holism or totality i mean relationalism and the death of the subject or the death of the author difference functionalism and modernity and then we have discussed social movements in terms of ideology and function political backgrounds i mean the the emergence of two marxisms then rationality when we have discussed the meaning of science and in the context especially althusser's concept of rationality althusser's delineation of rationality and so on and then we have discussed in the context of reflexivity we have discussed levi strauss uncertainty principle sixth week we have discussed western marxist perspectives on critical modernist paradigm in sociology i mean society as a human creation the view from the views from western marxism we have tried to try to delineate western marxism okay the concept of totality i mean there are differences between western marxism and structuralism and then we have discussed uh, i mean when we discuss western marxism we have discussed it through the works of georg lukacs antonio gramsci and alan turen and lukacs reification has significant implications for the way marx try to dwell upon alienation expressive totality and so on and then consciousness and action i mean human agency class agency and class conflict 
class consciousness, class organization, I mean hegemony in, in, in a more Gramscian sense, knowledge and action and in the section on uh, reflexivity and rationality we have discussed self creation, self knowledge and modernity, I mean historicity and then we have discussed absolute historicism. In the seventh week we have discussed how to synthesize modernity and social theory part 1, Wallerstein, Giddens and Habermas. Uh, it is very important to understand uh, how to synthesize modernity and social theory through the works of Wallerstein, Giddens and Habermas. Wallerstein's reflections on core periphery and semi-periphery, world capitalist, world economy and so on. Giddens structuration theory, uh, consequences of modernity and Habermas theory of communicative action. And part 2, we have further tried to look at the, the similarities between Wallerstein, Giddens and Habermas and then we have moved to I mean 8th week, uh, in the 8th week we have tried to uh, bring about the similarities between Wallerstein, Giddens and Habermas and then we have tried to take the debate on how to deconstruct modernity. And deconstruction of modernity may be divided into three parts. Obviously, there may be multiple parts, but for sake of convenience, we have divided it into, into, into three parts. Uh, one is feminism, secondly cultural studies and thirdly postmodernism. And second part of the eighth week, we have discussed the deconstruction of modernity and the feminist challenge and we have tried to look at the issues of social movements, reflexivity, rationality, holism and the, the issues of periodization, unified systems of account and finally what kind of some of the difficulties that of agreement in 1970s feminism and, and some of promise of unified socialist feminism relates to academic specialization or reification, I mean political economy, biological determinism, literary criticism, psychoanalysis and so on. The, the specialization of these fields and generation of narrow concepts tends to lose hold on the totality of lived experiences. And then we have in the ninth week, we have discussed deconstruction of modernity towards cultural studies through the works of three important authors, but from two philosophical standpoints. One, two philosophical standpoints when I say, I mean one socialist humanism and secondly post-structure, radical post-structuralism. Okay? And socialist humanism was strengthened, propounded by E. P. Thompson and Raymond Williams whereas radical post-structuralism was propounded by Michel Foucault. Okay? And there again how we have the way we have discussed Thompson and Williams that derived from western Marxist tradition but informed by lower middle class working class background and grassroots political activism post communist party formation in the erstwhile Soviet Union. How both E. P. Thompson and Raymond Williams made a refusal of, of base superstructure model how they what is the what is more important i mean in the case of social movements ep thompson and raymond williams tried to place uh, culture on a higher pedestal vis-a-vis -vis other categories in the context of holism or totality they tried to theorize the dialectic between experience and thought in in the context of rationality and uh, reflexivity uh, uh, the way uh, uh, the way uh, E. P. Thompson tried to unfurl the debates on dialectic rationality, whereas, um, whereas Raymond Williams tried to reflect on synthetic rationality. I mean, they tried to deviate from Weberian instrumental rationality. And, and Michel Foucault, as a representative, as a propagator of radical post structuralist stance, that uh, how he mentioned that. A power is possessed by someone, power is derived from a central source and power is primarily repressive. And he tried to give the example of school, you know, prison, uh, mental hospital and so on. Okay? And then we have discussed what are the common points or what are the commonalities, what are the similarities that we find between E. P. Thompson, Raymond Williams and Michel Foucault. Okay? And in the 10th week, we have discussed deconstruction of modernity, the postmodernist critic. And here, we have discussed David Harvey, we have discussed Frederick Jameson, we have discussed Michel Foucault again, okay, in terms of postmodernist aesthetics, postmodernity as a, as a historical condition, then postmodernism as ontology and epistemology, 
okay and feminism and postmodernism as a test case in the 11th week we have discussed a new totality it's very important to understand this responses from the proponents of critical modernist paradigm in sociology to the opponents in the form of i mean op opponents when i say i mean feminism post structuralism and post modernism and cultural studies critics okay and the empirical responses to post modernists we have discussed uh, in the context of holism or totality reflexivity and uh, rationality and social movements and for reflexivity and rationality please refer back to giddens and habermas again and obviously there is continued difficulty over contingency necessity and the difference or otherwise made by human agency there is a tendency for accounts to uh, fossilize into discussion of objectively uh, necessary developments in which human agency is merely a conveyor belt and feminism appears in guise of new social movements maybe we don't know and and perhaps only appearance and hence effectively subsumed under ecology peace movements clearly there is a relationship both with other new social movements and with for example um, development of welfare state i mean rise of female intelligence yeah, but this account is not adequate and has nothing to say about patriarchal organization of society then we have discussed uh, radicalized modernity uh, through new weberian and new marxist perspectives okay when i say new weberian i mean i refer to giddens and when i say new marxist i refer to habermas and giddens reflections on on institutional analysis of modernity i mean in his work on consequences of modernity is a weberian style multidimensional or pluralist account he become it becomes of interest in terms of its link to structuralism theory and habermas's uh, theory of communicative action i mean uh, communicative rationality uh, uh, must be understood uh, in the context of and these these two both these accounts must be understood in the context of radicalized modernity and the differences that which include maybe discourse of modernity then counter discourse of modernity subject centered reason intersubjective model subject object rationality i mean instrumental rationality or goal oriented social action in a in a more weberian sense then communicative rationality as substantive rationality for habermas then the difference which includes which also includes the necessarily good autonomy of economy and uh, sub state subsystems uh, but for habermas it is it is uh, in imbalanced uh, unbalanced growth increasing autonomy of ditto okay okay this this uh, philosophical discourse of modernity by habermas must be understood here i mean giddens argues that habermas makes use of three different types of rationality in terms of local criteria of rationality uh, i mean in communicative action giving rise to the possibility of universally valid judgments as to the rationality or otherwise of speech and action the concept of the rationality i mean comprehensibility of human action and the social expansion of rationality in the modern period okay that this all ideal speech situation and, and so on we have discussed in this week on on a new totality and then we have also discussed four i mean uh, we are, we, are, we try to wind up this this week with uh, four key concepts as problematics of modernity i mean all holism or totality reflexivity rationality and social movements then modernism uh, modernity as a paradigm okay and then modernity and feminism as a test case and then what kind of outlook that oh, we may develop uh, with this and then we have discussed in the last week in the 12th week we have discussed modernity india between worlds india between two worlds or multiple worlds and modernity in indian context when we discuss we have already discussed the reflections made by gandhi nehru tagore amartya sen and dipankar gupta okay and how there are differences even while imagining or while while sketching some kind of an image of nation building in the indian context and finally we tried to wind up this discussion by summing up the entire core structure with this lecture please remember one thing with each week 
you will be given 15 questions to answer one assignment you have to complete okay and 25% from the assignments will be credited to your final score there will be 50 questions for the final examination each question carries two marks okay but in the assignment case each question carries one mark for 15 questions okay now what you have to do please read the please take stock of the slides if you have any query please get back to me there is no problem any time you can get back to me uh, we have four TAs they can respond to your query on time adequately okay if need be I can also uh, join them in responding to your query do not worry about that please write your assignments properly do not miss any assignment do not skip any assignment mm. uh, each week we will have 15 questions each as assignment 25 percent will be taken into consideration uh, for the final score please do not miss them and in the final examination 75 percent weightage will be there okay if you find some difficulty in making sense of the slides or making sense of the lectures please get back to us quickly we will try to resolve these issues as soon as possible thank you